Okay. So next next session is the is the sharing working? Do you see a presentation? Yes, we can see it. Okay, very good. Thank you. So what we talk about now is is uh, placement optimization for for the network services. Uh, my name is Lars Jaren Magnusson. I'm from Arctos Labs. Uh, so this will now be uh, an introduction to 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 this thing. It's it's actually a new feature, and it's really not included in the thing that we are, we are running now. So if uh, the OSMs we have installed now are are 7.1. Uh, and placement will actually be a part of, of, of the next release. So um, this is a, a, a bit of a, of a preview. Uh, it won't be long until it's it's launched. Uh, I suppose we will plan the, the release days for, for release 8 uh, during this week, actually. So we'll start out by talking about uh, the concepts of, of, of placement optimization. So we sort of switch uh context a bit from from uh, slicing and slices in and and talk more about placing uh, vnfs in in a generic sense uh, and then we come back to a, a hands on session where we where we try this out on on uh, to make a second slice just as felipe had on his on his uh, last slide that he showed. Uh, so uh, the thing what we mean by, by placement optimization is, is uh, to decide automatically which VNF that goes into which VIM. So if you look at, at uh, the lower side here of the, of the picture, we have a, a network topology that that's uh, borrowed from uh, the new white paper released in, in February from, from OSM. Uh, it's a good read anyway, so that, that's uh, recommended. And here we can see that we typically maybe have a, a different types of data center and they, have, they are distributed and they have uh, uh, connectivity that could be, for instance, between this global data center, we have some sort of global connectivity, and then maybe we have a number of local data center, uh, which has some local or regional connectivity, as illustrated uh, in this figure, and uh, out closer to the edge of the network, we might have something, in this case, it's called customer premises, for instance. So now if we have a network service, uh, it might be beneficial to distribute this over the entire set of available data centers. Uh, in some cases, it it's may even be a must to do that. Uh, and when we talk about optimal in this case, uh, uh, we're talking about the cost of, of compute in the VMs. So how much does it really cost us to to add a, a VNF to a specific VIM. Uh, then the interworking between the network, uh, uh, the VLDs in the network services, uh, how much does that cost when we transfer data uh, between the, uh, the, the VIMs? And also, if there are any constraints in the interworking uh, within the network service, what we have support for now is latency and jitter uh, and the placement features uh, makes this process automatic and optimal and that's sort of the, the, the basic purpose with this thing. Uh, if we look at the optimization process then what, what's happening here you recognize the, the network topology that we had in the last slide uh, and we have also the, the network service, possibly with a set of constraints uh, on the VLDs between uh, the VNFs. So what will happen is that we will take these description of the network services with any constraints. Uh, we'll take the link characteristics. Is there latency? Is there jitter? What, what are those values? 
we take cost figures. Uh, how much, much does it cost to execute a VNF in a specific VM? How much does it cost us to transfer data? And so forth. Uh, and then we put all this uh, inside the placement module and, and then we just try to optimize what's the cheapest thing that actually will work. So the placement function will then consider all the VIMs that are available to the user and also make sure that constraints are met if there are any and we'll then optimize on the cost which is the criteria that we have now. Uh, Internally, uh, within the placement uh, module, oh, that's, uh, uh, inter sorry, I got a note that my VPN was down. <laughs> uh, internally in the placement engine, uh, things are, are uh, modeled as a constraints optimization problem. So there's really not a sort of traditional uh, algorithm if you like it's more of a uh, it's, it's it's a model so if we can model things like mm, characteristics and costs and constraints and all these things then we treat it as an optimization problem and have uh, solvers specifically targeted to to those kind of problems uh, so to to summarize what we do is is we compute the optimal placement of vnfs over the different vims by matching the network service requirements to whatever infrastructure we have available and whatever runtime metrics we have on these infrastructure while at the same time we consider the cost of compute and network. Uh, a bit of examples on, on, on what we have here. If we start from, from the left side uh, we can do cost optimization only. Uh, that means we don't put any, any specific constraints on the network service. We just want this to run as, as, as cheap as, as possible. This is what we will try out in the, in the hands-on part. Uh, we can also do cost optimization with, for instance, latency constraints that says that, okay, these, these uh, VNFs, uh, will will uh, require some sort of specific uh, latency uh, and then we need to match that to ensure that the the links are are uh, satisfying those things so so that's uh, in place then we can think about other things that might come in the future uh, we might for instance change from using cost as the optimization target or criteria and think more about for instance utilization which could be one thing that that is interesting we're interesting uh, at uh, at filling up data centers for instance or there could be other aspects like uh, we want to have uh, uh, energy efficiency or, or things like that. I think there were some, some questions. Uh, I think the presentation has been shared right. I think Dominic did that. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, uh, can this placement be dynamic? If the cost changes, will the VNF be migrated? Not now, but of course, that's the thing that, that's for the future because that's very interesting if we have a service that that is that is capable to migrate then it's very interesting to be able to constantly move this around within different data centers if there is a sale on 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 amazon well <laughs> then maybe we can move it there but but for time being for this very first release it's a one thing uh, decision that that's done when we when we uh, instantiate uh, the service so I hope that answers Costa's question. Uh, okay, so looking more into the future, uh, we can also think about uh, cost optimization with some sort of capability constraints. 
so we match requirements from the from the network service or from the vnfs with specific capabilities uh, we could for instance as we have an example here it could be that some vnf will benefit from having a, a, a gpu for instance it could be some machine learning thing that that runs better with a gpu or requires a gpu there could be other type of of, of capability constraints you can also imagine things like affinity and anti-affinity that could be seen as some sort of capability uh, for the uh, for us living in europe for instance we have gdpr so it could be things that are not allowed to be placed outside a certain region or something like that so there can be many things that uh, uh, can can uh, be introduced later on uh, so we'll see what happens but uh, for now we're we're sort of at at uh, number two uh, a bit of an uh, example of use cases that we can have here uh, we could for instance uh, consider uh, a situation where we want to have a, a, a UPF in a, in a 5G setup uh, where where we want to place this use UPF then as, as close to the customer to achieve whatever latency constraint that we have so in this case maybe we have two options but we need to go for this VIM because we want to to support uh, the low latency requirements uh, we could also have this kind of where we want to optimize more from a, from a um, transport costs for for some iot data processing so where we want to to put things close to the source of the data to re, in this case reduce transport costs and load uh, another thing that we can think about is is that sometimes it could also be very interesting to see how far away can this be as things usually maybe becomes cheaper if you scale up the data center so if we can move things away uh, from sort of the the close vicinity for for the for the run instance uh, that could be interesting from from a cost uh, perspective so that's some sort of example of, of uh, possible use cases uh, that we have we'll come back a bit to this also with some some other examples uh, then a bit about pinning things nothing here i mean what we have in reality it doesn't uh, it doesn't live out of context what we ultimately aim to do is to provide uh, for for telco applications we want to provide coverage network accessibility in some region or in some area uh, and, and that means that our network service always has some interesting endpoints uh, it could be as in the examples we are using now uh, we have a uh, a UE and an E node B at one side, and then we have uh, the internet or or the, the gateway at at the other side. Uh, so that will sort of govern where we start out to to resolving all these things with uh, where things should go. So we have some examples here. Maybe we need to to uh, pin a VNF that uh, to a specific VIM, for instance. We need this service to be close to the packet gateway in this case or it could be that we want to have it to a vim with connectivity to a specific pnf uh, consider for instance uh, something that's related to an enode b then we might have a, a, a number of different enode b's distributed over a region and, and we need to to start deploying our service uh, so we have connection to to that specific uh, set of pnfs for instance 
And if we have an enterprise setup, which maybe is, is something of, of interest for 5G, it might so be so that, that we want to start with uh, deciding that oh, some part of this service needs to go to a specific customer location. So we have a CP. Uh, auto in this figure just implies that there is no specific pinning and that's then subject for, for optimization. The thing is, this, this is all about finding out where the VNF should or must be deployed uh, if we have a multi-VIM uh, NFVI. And we can have a look at some different scenario and, and, and talk a bit about what's, what will happen and, and what's reasonable here. Uh, Let's say that we have this, this uh, network topology and infrastructure. We have a global data center, a local data center, and then we have two customer premises uh, data center at the edge. So if, if we have an NSD with, with three different VNFs and two links, and we just say that put this wherever you want. Uh, we don't do any pinning, we don't do any constraints. Well, then things will end up in the global data center because that's cheapest. Uh, we should also note that, that uh, the cost for intra data center connectivity is sort of assumed to be zero at this point, at least. So that's, the, uh, that's I suppose, simple. Uh, we don't have any specific requirements. This service can run anywhere, uh, then everything will end up here. Now, in reality, as we spoke about, uh, things probably needs to be distributed to some sort of, of uh, uh, more local or regional thing. So, so let's assume we have a scenario B where uh, we need to put the first VNF in VIM3 over here. But the other ones we can freely place. Uh, it would be possible to co-locate all of them uh, in this data center, but the cost is a bit high. So we can see that if we move things here, for instance, uh, the total cost of, of the transport plus the cost of actually running it in this uh, data center is lower, uh, which means that we can place the second VNF uh, over here in this local data center. Uh, and then when we come to the third VNF, well, that could also be here, but it is actually cheaper to take the, the transport uh, cost and the cost of running in this data center. So for scenario B, we will distribute from the global data center to the local data center to, to uh, CP uh, number three. If we then take another example and say that, okay, let's, let's uh, uh, have a scenario where we, where we need to put the first VNF in the VM number four, that uh, customer premises site. Uh, but in this case, we actually do have a, a constraints on the connectivity between uh, VNF three and VNF two. So following what happened here, uh, it's, it's better to, to put number two uh, in the local data center, it's cheaper. But in this case, it's not possible uh, to actually put VNF3 in uh, the global data center in VIM number one, because it violates the latency constraints. This link is a bit too slow. And what will, do, what will happen then is when we do the optimization, we will sort of find out that, okay, we need to put it here. The cost is a bit higher than compared to scenario B, but it will work. So those are the things of, of automation that, that we, we're looking for here. Uh, so this is just a very simple example. For, for some, it might be obvious <laughs> immediately where things will end up with, with these kinds of, of costs and, and, and latency and constraints and, and, and so forth. But mm, to me, maybe it's not that, that obvious all the time. So, so uh, it's actually quite nice to, to have support for, for these kind of things, I believe. Uh, 
Uh, and also if we imagine that, that we have a scenario that looks more like this, we have lots of data centers and, and uh, lots of network services and slices and so forth, then it can become a bit cumbersome to, to, <laughs> to actually keep all this in, in mind and, and uh, manually try to, to optimize these things. Okay, that was a bit theory behind uh, these things. So we'll look a bit about the details here. Uh, this is then the, uh, the PLA component inside uh, OSM. It's uh, part of the, of the service assurance group of, of components together with MON and POL. Uh, it's a new component. Uh, it will land in release eight, uh, but it's also an optional component. So when you install OSM, uh, you need to give the dash dash PLA uh, flag so that uh, PLA will be included. Uh, as we said in the beginning, we now have some sort of basic functionality initially. There are quite a lot of ideas on how this could uh, could evolve, but to start with, we have a, a more simple thing. And what happens is that when when you have a uh, command, for instance, uh, NS create or from the GUI, if you if you use that with or without some constraints, uh, we'll pass the MBI. LCM will detect that we uh, intend to have automatic placement support, and that is by this this uh, part in the in the config uh, where we actually say that the placement engine should be PLA uh, and then we can also give some some constraints so LCM will then rather than just uh, defaulting to the default VIN that you have it will branch out and ask PLA so how do we best position this network service among the VIMs that are available uh, to this OSM user. So PLA will do this uh, computation and then uh, return back uh, to LCM then. And we'll continue just as, as normal then to talk to RO and, uh, and so forth. Uh, Now, in order to get this thing to work, we also need to configure it. Uh, and this is a, a bit basic at the moment for the first release. Uh, if we look back to, to this illustration, we know that we need link characteristics. We know, know that we need costs. Uh, we need to understand the topology. Uh, and then eventually we'll need the, the constraints also. But if we, if we start by this uh, topology and characteristics and, and so forth, there are two different configuration files that we uh, currently use. One is the, the BNF price list, it's a YAML file, uh, and it determines the price for uh, each VNF at each VIM. Uh, uh, so it will look something like this. For instance, in our case, we have we have the VNFD now that we will use the, the Mac, Mac access gateway. Uh, uh, and, and for the different uh, projects that we have in, in OSM, we will have different prices for different VIMs. We will actually add a second VIM. Now you only have one VIM, but, but uh, we'll add a second VIM. So we have something to, to choose between. Uh, uh, and then, of course, prices and so forth. Uh, there is also then uh, uh, for the point of presence interconnection link or PIL uh, price list file. And this describes uh, the characteristic for the transport links between the VIMs. Uh, and currently, uh, the price per link is given without any consideration to bandwidth or other quality of service parameters as, as such. So it can look like this to, to, to send some sort of data between or allocate connectivity between the first and second VIM that it will cost us five credits or dollars or whatever. 
it has the uh, characteristics that it, the latency is, is 10 milliseconds and the jitter is 2 milliseconds and so forth. Uh, we should note that in the current release, these characteristics are now hard-coded in this file. You can replace it at many times as you want, uh, but in the future releases, this should then, of course, be retrieved from, from the infrastructure by, by monitoring mechanisms. So we actually have probes in the network uh, that gives us the, the, the actual numbers. Uh, so, so that's uh, intended for, for for later uh, releases. Uh, for now, we need to we need to uh, copy this file to the PLA command, uh, container, and we use the following commands. We just place them in a, at a certain folder. Uh, now, you don't have to do this uh, as a Hackfest participant. We uh, both the the OSM instances that we have today uh, are prepared with these configuration files, so uh, PLA should be should be good to go. Uh, one thing that we will probably also look into quite soon is is that we we add an an, uh, an API so we can do this uh, directly uh, in a more convenient way than than using Docker copy. Instead, we can use the OSM client or the northbound interface to, to programmatically uh, update these files, which actually would be a way to, to also do this uh, more dynamic monitoring of, of uh, latency and jitter and prices also, because these, uh, these configuration files are read at each, uh, each invoca invocation of, of placement. Uh, so when we invoke this thing, uh, we need to to tell OSM that we want to have uh, support for for automatic placement, and we do this by adding placement engine uh, PLA uh, to dash dash config. Uh, as we will see later, I mean you can you can do this in a in a configuration file. Uh, if we want to pin a specific thing, a specific VNF, then we just add that, oh, for this VNF, it's a list of the VNFs we want to pin. pin. Uh, we identify the index, and then we just say it should go to this VIM account. In this case, it was called OpenStack3. Uh, in addition, uh, we can also put these constraints that we talk about. Uh, now we have the VLD constraints, and then we have the from the network service descriptor from the NSD, the, the VLD that has the ID VLD underscore one, and it has these kind of link constraints, latency uh, better than 120, jitter better than 20 in this case. Uh, for a second uh, VLD, uh, the constraint is that in this uh, example, jitter should be better than 20. So you can, you can mix all these things uh, freely. Uh, we also try to do this open-ended so that that uh, we can grow and and uh, so we can support more type of, of constraints as we as we talked about uh, earlier. And then of course we can we can mix all these things together that we have pinning of some specific VNF and and constraints for some specific link. This actually then. Uh, corresponds to the uh, scenario C that we were looking at uh, before. Uh, uh, and then, of course, you can do this from, from the GUI as well, uh, with or without YAML file. Uh, it's, as, as Felipe pointed out, it's, it's a lot easier to actually have a, a file, so you get all the all the bits in the right in the right places. Okay, uh, we had uh, intended to do a bit of, of, of hands-on also. Uh, I know we're a bit short of time actually, uh, so but we can go through this uh, quickly. I think uh, the good thing is that 
nothing that you will do later on builds on this okay so the intention here is just that we want to show uh, uh, a bit of the, the the capabilities but what will you will do as sort of later today and uh, has no has no dependency uh, on these things uh, so the first thing is that you need to to launch a second uh, or create a, another vim in order for us to launch this second slice so uh, uh, using this command uh, in your environment will will make things uh, okay uh, it will ha give the, the the proper name the vim name is important because it's must, must match the contents of the price list file uh, uh, user and password and tenants should follow your personal settings so so uh, those things also should, should be okay you may notice that there is another url here uh, because we have we have in fact a, uh, another vim another open stack uh, set up uh, so account type in open stack and and we shouldn't forget the additional configuration about the the management network name and, and and those things so that things will be okay now i will try to see if i can actually establish a, a vpn connection because i lost it Okay, seems that I am connected. Uh, let's see, we should go for this one. Do you actually see a terminal now? No, Lars, we are. No. No. Okay, so we need to look at the sharing. Uh, better now i can see yeah okay thank you but it's uh, a bit small better yeah. maybe i should do like this maybe i should maybe i should share the uh, screen so because i think we need to switch between these things uh, and uh, the terminal so uh, in order to create uh, another one, you should you should give this command. It should be possible to to copy and paste from the from the presentation that has been shared. I think actually uh, in this uh, for this tenant, it is already it is already uh, created. Uh, so you can you can go ahead and, and do this. Uh, and then when we have a second vim uh, we should have a look at, at uh, uh, the hack list scripts uh, there should be uh, a, a launch nsi placement Oops, sorry Uh, that we should use uh, in this case uh, we we what we need to do is, is that uh, since we add another vim uh, we need to connect the pdu to this vim as well so the script will create uh, a new pdu yaml file which will have the vim account uh, according to this 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 new vim that we have created with the low cost flag in the name uh, and then it will do the osmpdu create command uh, just as as we did earlier on yesterday or something i suppose you did that uh, and the next next thing to think about is the the parameters to the nsi create command so uh, 
we will then from the script create the params underscore slices to uh, YAML file. There are a few things to, to, to consider here. Uh, placement engine uh, will, be, will be added then to PLA. Uh, we will not put anything, any other constraints or something like this uh, in this example. We also need to set the, the wide area network infrastructure manager, the, the WIM account, to false because we, we will not use this uh, in this particular setup. Uh, there's an also a change for the uh, ID and name of the access gateway because we need another one. The default that you used for Felipe's session was probably 100, so we just changed that to, to 101. Uh, the, the addresses will, will then follow your, your environment, uh, I suppose, uh, for, for these things. And then uh, the slice uh, will be launched. But in this case, we will call it Magma Slice 2, uh, same template. Uh, we will use the original, or the default uh, Vim account because the idea is that PLA should override that and actually decide on a different, different placement of this, of this slice. And then we use the config files, uh, which is denoted then params slices 2.yaml. And then the, the other things should be, should be uh, as, as before. Uh, so, uh, looking at the presentation, we've gone through this, these kind of, of descriptions. So now let's see if we uh, actually got uh, all these things uh, working. So I haven't been able to follow if, if I mean, it's a, it's a must that you have sort of completed then the, the following uh, or the previous session. So, so you have the, the setup with the slices uh, according to, to Felipe's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we can see uh, what we have now. Uh, at least we see that we have an instance name. We have this magma slice two going on. It's anything. It will probably then take take some times. Uh, seems that it's creating the the next yes. slice and stuff. Um, Lars, yes. yes. The, the, the point here is the uh, can can you run the command osm uh, that, uh, space uh, vim dash list uh, uh, vim no, uh, vnf sorry. Maybe we can see it there, yes. Yes. Already. Yes, that's good. So mm. here you have the VIN account. Yeah, go, go ahead, Lars. You can identify by the VIN account. Yes, exactly, exactly. So so what we see here, if, if we see the, the, the VIN names, uh, uh, we can see that, that we have an access gateway since before we should have done this uh, before we started uh, that's that's allocated to Etsy OpenStack 53 in that case which was sort of the, the default vim uh, then we created uh, another vim it's identified by 1942 and so forth and now we see that that we actually do have uh, these new uh, vnfs uh, that is actually allocated then to that new other beam. So uh, placement did overrule that, that sort of initial ID to, to place everything in, in OpenStack uh, 53 uh, and, and go for, for the low cost one uh, instead. Okay, uh, I don't know if there, there could be could be questions that I haven't had time or op possibility to observe because there has been quite a, a lot of things going on with with the original uh, slices. Uh, I don't know if we should go through them now or if we actually just break for for uh, for 
coffee. One thing that we can think about is that, uh, uh, of course, since this new slice is clear, created, it's possible to configure and send traffic over it. So we won't do that now. Uh, you may want to clean up and delete the slice uh, using OSM and SI delete and then uh, the slice name, which then would be uh, magma underscore slice underscore two. Uh, you might also want to remove the parameter file. So you won't uh, by accident uh, reuse it for, uh, for some other purposes uh, later on. So, uh, with that, I think we, we uh, close this session. I will go through the chat uh, and see if there are any, any uh, questions put specifically for, for placement, and then I uh, try to answer them uh, in some way. Okay? Okay, thank you, Lars. Uh, I will be